Fine. So can you see my screen? That white screen actually. Yes, sir. Okay. So last time, so Monisha actually introduced uh, ab about that homotopy of parts and what are or else? Okay. So did you understand? So I have two parts, uh, and um, and she proved that this join is actually uh, uh, that that joining map satisfies the accessory property. Okay. Means that for three. Uh, what about that inverse? So she did not prove the inverse. But anyway, I will go from the beginning because otherwise. So how many of you understood that the joining of paths or path homotopy? Do you have any problem on that? Or shall I repeat those? Yes. Shall I repeat those or not? Are few people attending this? Okay, now someone replied. See, you can unmute and you can speak, right? Otherwise, I have to go to this inbox and then I have to see what it is saying. Just unmute and just speak. It is better. Okay. So first of all, that is most important part. That is, this is the tool of this subject that is called path. So what is path? So first of all, we need a topological space and we will be talking the on path on the topological space. That's mean. So first of all, let X be a topological space. Okay, now what does it mean by a path? That's mean. So let F, we will take from 0, 1 to X be a continuous function. Okay. Now this continuous function is called path. Now this is called a path. That's mean a path is nothing but a continuous function from closed interval 0, 1 to x. That's mean if that is your topological space and this is my 0, 1 and this is just a map F, right? So that path can be anything. It can be like this. So this can be a path or you can say. This can be a path anything. Because we do, do not need right that injectivity or surjectivity anything. Right? So therefore it is just a continuous. Function from closed interval 0, 1 to X. So sometimes we call this is by I. But anyway, I will not write I, I will write closed interval 0, 1 as well. Okay, so this is just a path. Now, if F of 0 is an element of X, right? Say this is X0 and F of 1 is say X1, then we say that F is a path from x0 to x1. Okay, this is just a path. So that's mean we have a topological space x. So this is my x0, so this is my x1. So path can be anything. Okay, now during this course, we always we, we will take path. Now remember that when we choose actually path and homotopy of path, that that in points are very important. Now we define homotopy of two paths. So first of all, let F and G be two paths. So uh, okay, so I just remind you that you don't have to write anything. 
you just listen this one because after this talk i shall provide you the handwritten note okay then you can read from that okay so i have another question i have to go through this okay what is that no fine now when we say f and g two parts that's mean here actually we mean that their in points are same that's mean f0 equal to g0 and f1 equal to g1 so that's mean if this is a path f and then this will be another path g okay now we define homotopy of these two parts f and g okay so first of all let f and g two parts from closed interval 0 1 to x okay should be two parts such that as i told you their in points are same that's mean f 0 equal to g 0 which is just x 0 and f1 equal to g1 equal to x1 okay now we say that f and g are homotopic okay say so by you can say path homotopy by a path homotopy say if 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 0 1 cross 0 1 to x is a continuous function Such that so if x comma actually you can write it is zero that is see this is I can write here s so actually we will call it is f s comma t and this t is actually gives you the time okay so at time zero it is actually your map f of s only and f s comma 1 equal to g s okay so that's been what is f actually so this is gives a map from this one to this topological space such that whenever you have this one so this one this goes to the path so this is i right this is closed interval 0 1 now this closed interval 0 1 goes to your path f where this is x 0 and this is x 1 and when it moves this way this path also moves this way but remember that that in points are fixed okay and when it moves to this and then it will be my this one that is g okay and since in point are fixed we have to add two more properties so first of all it is if the first point is zero at the initial point zero whatever the time t that is in this direction it is always fixed so if s is zero then whatever the t it is always x0 and if that is one that is final point now whatever a time is it is always x1 okay so this is the map and if we have such a continuous map f then we say that that f is homotopic to g and we just write in this symbol is that clear any question here I can see if there is any question here.
Yes. Say something. Yes or no? So just unmute and you can speak. Sir, no questions. Okay. You should say. Because you are not now new student, right? Fine. Now remember that if we fix a particular, okay, first of all from this, now if there is such such a continuous function, f then we always have another continuous function say g from again okay i should write this 0 1 cross 0 1 to the topological space x by this way so you can just write g of s comma t equal to say previously f of s comma 1 minus t okay you can define in this way then see if f is continuous then you can see that g is also continuous right now here you can see that g of now s comma 0 that will be actually f of s comma 1 that is gx right and g of s comma 1 that will be your fx and g of 0 comma t that will be x0 and g of 1 comma t that will be x1 right so that's mean if you have a homotopy you can say if from f to g then you always have another path homotopy that is kind of map from g to f as well right so therefore that order does not matter so that's mean you can always say that f and g are homotopy Okay, because it may confuse you because when I define that homotopic that f and g are homotopic, then I told you that there exists a map f, right? Such that at the time zero it was f and at the time one it was g, right? But it does not matter the order. So it may happen that you, you can, when I say that f and g are homotopic, that means there may exist a function, say g, continuous function, such that at time zero, it is G and at time one, it is F. So that order does not matter here, okay? Sir, uh, that a small G and small F would be function of S only in the, where road G, capital G S comma zero is a small G X. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, yes, sir. Actually, generally we generally use that function fx and gx. So that is that usual practice. Okay, but uh, okay. So this is actually called path homotopic. Those uh, uh, in this course actually when we talk about that homotopic, that's mean we actually mean path homotopy. But it is always better to practice that path homotopy. Or you can write homotopic as well. But remember that whenever we write homotopy, we actually mean that is a path homotopic. Okay. Fine. Now that is a another one that if you fix your t, okay. Now if you fix your t, then you can see that we can define. f of s t equal to you can define in the sense of f t s in this way okay where each of f t is a path in x right 
that's when if you fix any t then you can always have this ft right and this is a path and here also this is this has the property that ft of 0 that is for any t that is my x0 and ft of 1 that is my x1 and f 0 of s or you can say that not s we do not need that so f of 0 is actually my f and f of 1 is actually my g right so you can define now here also so there are many ways to say that f and y are uh, sorry f and g are pathomotopic so first way is you can say that f and g are homotopic you can say by this is just writing okay or you can write via you can write via the path homotopy if you can write this way this way as well or we have defined g right so you can write g as well so this is one way you can write f and g are homotopic by path homotopy f or you can say that f and g are homotopic via or by path homotopy g or you can see in this way as well so f and g are homotopic again by or you can say via you can just write homotopy that is homotopy of paths f t you can say this one as well so these are just language so you can write this as well as you can write this so we generally call that collection of path that is that family of path f t this one this is called a family of paths okay or you can say the family of homotopy of paths that connect f with g okay we generally call this one as well why so to define a path homotopy between f and g right it is is it is uh, means uh, sufficient to find either ft or f of s comma t right because both are actually equivalent why both are equivalent because f of s comma t equal to ft s right so if you can find that ft then also it is fine or you can find this one as well but remember that it is always now can you guess so what is uh, actually easy to write so this one the first one or second one can you guess that which is actually easy to write easy to write in the sense that uh, that is good to write you can say that which one is better one or two one sir one no actually that is two do you know why because even if you write ft you have to show that continuity each of ft is continuous here each of ft is continuous that is fine but to show that path homotopy or homotopy you have to show the continuity of this function f you have to show that continuity of this function f that is needed because that is the definition of homotopy so the definition of homotopy is there exists a continuous path f this one so you have to show that continuity even if you write in terms of ft then you have to show that this f or the by this definition this one that is continuous you have to show that so i always prefer this one to write this because if you write directly this then you don't have to go somewhere but if you write this one, then you have to go here only to show that that is continuous. Okay. 
Now we can give one example. I think Munisha gave that example in the last lecture. So say in R2. R2 is my topological space X, right? And we choose two parts. So let F and G be two parts in R2. with common endpoints. OK. So that's when this is my F. And say this is my G. OK, and it is in R2. Now we wish to prove that F and G are homotopic for any path which has common endpoint. Say this is my X0 and say this is my F X1. So how to find this path homotopy? Can you give one path homotopy between F and G to show that F and G are homotopy? So we have to give one continuous function F, right? From I cross I or 0, 1 cross 0 that is from the square to X such that it satisfies just four conditions. Can you give me the path? Path homotopy, capital F. Yes, that was taught right in the previous lecture. Now just unmute and, and say. 1 minus TF plus TZ. Right. So we can always take F from 0, 1 cross 0, 1 to X such that F of ST is say 1 minus T FS plus T F sorry, GS right now first of all you have to check that F is continuous that is the first condition now others condition is trivial right because F of S comma 0 that is obviously if you put t equal to 0, then it, that will be f of s. The second condition if f of s comma 1, if you put 1, that will be g of s. If you put f of 0 comma s, then that will be 1 minus t f0, f0 is x0 plus t x0. So that is my x0 only. And the fourth one is f of 1 comma, sorry, t. 1 comma t that is again 1 minus t f1 f1 is x1 plus t x1 so that is again x2 right so these conditions are fine that only thing is you have to show that that is continuous now can you see that that is a continuous function can you prove that it is continuous how will you prove that Uh, yeah, we can uh, like we can define this function as a composition of uh, two functions. Uh, first, it maps s comma t to uh, s comma uh, one minus t, and uh, then uh, sorry, uh, no. Uh, first, it will map s comma t to s comma t comma one minus t, and yeah, that is actually a simple one. That is a simple trivial not even exercise. So you can define many maps, say F1 S comma T, say 1 minus T. So this is kind of, that is, it is constant S, but that is a function. Then you can define another S comma T, that is just say F of S, right? It is also continuous. Now similarly, you can define GST, and all of these are the continuous functions, and these are the composition of continuous functions only, right? Just product and sum, so it is continuous. So this is a trivial one. Another trivial way you can prove even it is di directly by using that continuity of F and continuity of G. How? You can just take any S comma T, okay? Just take a sequence Sn comma Tn. Take a sequence this converges to S comma T, okay? Now you can show that F of Sn comma Tn that converges to F of S comma T. You can easy to prove that, right? Because what is my f of Sn comma Tn? 
that will be 1 minus Tn f of Sn plus Tn f of G of Sn, right? Now, since f is continuous and Sn converges to S, so f of Sn converges to Fs, G of Sn converges to G of S, and 1 minus Tn converges to 1 by T, 1 minus T, and Tn converges to T. So, by the sequential criteria or sequential product, you can prove that f of Sn Tn converges to f of st so therefore f is continuous right so that is easy to prove in both ways so here, you can uh, able yeah. to use the sequence lemma because uh, r square is a metric space right like for general topology we couldn't have used Why? no 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 we are not using that one but here we can use that because my x here it is r2 Right, right, right. And R square yeah. is uh, metric. We know that, like it's a metric. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right. Otherwise, we cannot define in plus, right? Otherwise, there is no meaning of right, plus. Right, right, right. right, right. Hmm. Here we can use that. Okay. You can, even you can use the sequential criteria in the some other places in the sense that. Uh, anyway, so we will come to that one. So here we can use that definitely because of this one because R is a matrix. Even we are defining that plus here, right? That is also a good point because do not use that sequential any arbitrarily. If you have any arbitrary topological space, that is a good point. But here we can use that. But that composition thing that is clear and you can always use that. And in fact, in the in those cases, you have to feel that so this kind of map is continuous by taking this kind of composition because you will have many kinds of proof. Then it sometimes uh, you may not prove that it is continuous, you can directly say that it is continuous. But when you say something is continuous, you should understand why it is continuous. You cannot write blindly, right? But that is a good point. If we have arbitrary topological space, we cannot do that. But here we can do that because our here our topological space is R square. And even we are defining here plus and minus as well. OK, good, good point. Now there is another uh, interesting theorem. This is also proved in the last lecture. It is, you can say theorem, the homotopy the homotopy relation is an equivalence relation. Okay, so in the homotopy relation is an equivalence relation. That's mean it is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. It is symmetric. We have already seen in the when we give the definition. Do you remember that just now? We have seen that. Here, yes, that sir. only only problem is that the transitive. Here, that where, where you have to prove. Other is other two properties are very simple. For an example, suppose you want to prove that uh, that one reflexive. That's when f is homotopic to itself. Now, how to prove that? How you can find a continuous function f? So just define what? Tell me how to prove that. No, I will give uh, next from the next time. So I will make a rule that who will speak who will get some extra marks. Otherwise, people do not speak. Now tell me that is simple. How to prove? So that we can. <coughs> We can take f of st as f of s, the uh, right. part itself. Right. So when I ask, then immediately just reply that. So those who are MEC student, you should answer because you just have done the topology course and uh, also this kind of you know. I know that you people know this, but you should speak. So we can take this is just f of s. That's all. Right. Now, obviously, since small f is continuous, so capital F is continuous, right? By the construction. And also, it satisfies all the four conditions. For an example, 
f of s comma 0 that is f if you take the second condition f of s comma 1 that is again f and if you take f of 0 comma t that is f of 0 f of 0 that is x 0 and f of 1 comma t equal to f of 1 that is x 1 okay but here I should also mention that the homotopy relation here. So with common endpoints. OK, so actually uh, I have seen many books. Many books have two type of actually relation. One is uh, two kinds of definition. One is uh, homotopy. Another one is path homotopy. They are different. But in Hatcher, both are same actually. So that path homotopy is actually homotopy. They just write homotopy. Because here, we in this course actually, we only study that path homotopy. Okay. Because homotopy does not actually gives anything. So therefore, we just we just read homotopy. And whenever we are talking about that homotopy or path homotopy, it is always understood that we have common endpoints. Otherwise, there is no meaning of path homotopy. Okay. So that is the reason I missed that term, but always it is better to include in the theorem. Okay, now this is satisfied. So therefore we can say that F, that homotopic to G. So this is our notation, okay? Either this or you can say that F is, oh, homotopic to F itself. Homotopic to F itself. You can say that via or by f. Okay, so this is reflexive. Now, what about your uh, symmetric? How to prove it is symmetric? This is also I proved actually. So f of s t equal to g of s one minus t. You can take right. It. So just we can take f of s t equal to sorry. You can take G of ST equal to F of S1 minus T. So what is F actually? So first of all, we have to consider let F is a, so let F be a homotopy between F and G, right? So F homotopic to G via F. That's mean F this satisfy this kind of condition. And then if you consider G equal to this one, then you can see that G S comma zero will be G S, right? And G G comma S comma one will be F S. So if F is homotopic to G via F, that imply G is homotopic to F via G. So therefore it is symmetric as well. Now similarly, you can prove it is transitive. So now do this precisely. So tentative. Now let F homotopic to G via via F and G homotopic to H via say G. So that's mean we have f and g both are continuous function okay i should not write this from 0 1 cross 0 1 to x such that these four conditions we have f of s comma 0 equal to f f of s comma 1 equal to g f of 0 comma t that is x 0 f of 1 comma t that is x 1 so we have this as well as we have f of sorry, g of s comma 0 equal to g s g of s comma 1 equal to h x 
g of 0 comma t that is x0 g of 1 comma t that is x1 okay now f is homotopic to g g is homotopic to h now we want to define a map h again from 0 1 cross 0 1 to x we need to define in such a way that f will be homotopic to h now can you give me the definition of h or can you define h so that it will happen yes so uh, we can in half time we can cover uh, using like we can go from f to g and in exactly. another half we can go from g to h right so we can define this way that first of all f s comma say 2t if for all s actually from if t less than equal to half and g of s 2t minus 1 half less than equal to t less than equal to 1 right now obviously these four properties is easy to check right now if you take h of s comma 0 what will be that will come to f only right so therefore s comma 0 it will be f of s comma 0 so it will be f of s now if you take h of s comma 1 then we come to because t equal to 1 so you have this one right so g of s comma 1 just put here t equal to 1 you will have 1 so therefore it will be g of 1 so therefore h s right and similarly if you put um, s equal to 0 then you can see that here f 0 and g 0 and both are x 0 so therefore you have h of 0 comma t that is x 0 and h of 1 comma t that is x 1 so these are easy now the thing is the main property is this is continuous we need that now tell me why this is continuous so since uh, this uh, we can check on the point at uh, 1 by 2 no uh, you cannot F check you you cannot check the point at 1 by 2 because it is a two dimensional the domain is two dimensional not the one dimensional But sir, it's uh, continuous throughout. F is continuous and G is continuous. So at the point where they are added. No. Still, we'll... Yeah, that is correct. Your concept is correct. But that way you are saying that it is not correct. We should do it via the composition of maps. No, it is given competition. No, Pogoti. I, I no. ask only that Pogoti. So, MS student only, not a PhD student. Sir, for all values of S, and uh, we can see that F and G, the intersections is same. Common point. Then, my pasting lemma, we can. Uh, right, that right. You have to say that. That is that pasting lemma. So, what is actually, you can see that what is my domain of F now? Now, domain of F is closed interval 0, 1 product with 0 comma half that is the domain of this one right and what is the domain of g here that is 0 1 cross half cross 1 right now we know that f is continuous and this is just a re-representation of uh, the domain right we have just taking that squeeze a little bit and here also we just squeeze a little bit of time so we are just make the time faster so that with this time it gets right so therefore it is continuous that is continuous that is clear now both so that mean your map h is continuous on this interval and on this interval and both are closed sets and their intersection is non empty so therefore by pasting lemma we can say that h is continuous right do you remember that theorem pasting lemma that if you have a topological space the topology if you have a function from a topological space x to somewhere and if um, that 
f is continuous on a and f is continuous on b and if a and b are closed sets and their intersection is non empty then f is continuous on a union b yes sir right? so we are just using here pasting lemma that all okay so using the continuity of f and continuity of g we can say that h is continuous in this domain and h is continuous in this domain now say this is my a say this is my b now since the function that is h is continuous on a and continuous on b and a and b are closed sets that is also important and their intersection is non empty right so therefore h is continuous on a union b so therefore here h is continuous and so do we need the fact that their intersection is non empty like yes okay you actually you need in the sense that uh, because otherwise there is no meaning one because otherwise uh, what should i say on that one so it is individually if it's continuous then it is continuous that is fine why we do hmm. not need that's mean we are talking about a continuity on a connected domain right so therefore we need some domain we have to separate into two domains whose intersection is non empty okay right otherwise otherwise it may happen that you can divide a connected interval into two parts such mm -hmm. that both are not closed and and it is continuous on each the one but it is not continuous on the whole domain uh, yes uh... for an example it is the easiest example you can take say f of x say in one dimension say 1 say 2 it is say what One less than equal to say one. Uh, sorry, x say less than two, and say two less than equal to x say less than equal to three. Now you can see that now that function f is continuous on one two, and it is also continuous in two three, right? Mm -hmm. But it is not continuous in the whole domain. That is a union b. Oh right, right, right. right right so that was the region we need their intersection should be non empty and also we need both are either closed or both are open uh, actually so here here, uh, here we are also violating that uh, both are closed so like exactly, one, exactly. but one, but if both are closed. right what if both are closed and if you are not uh, taking their intersection is non empty then actually we will get a disconnected uh, 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 domain Ah. ah but uh, uh, we, uh like can't we have continuous functions from a disconnected domain to no that is domain? fine that is fine okay that is also fine but if you have a and b both are closed then you should need the intersection should be non empty uh, for, uh, for if you want a connected so, domain as well uh, right okay so then so then the given uh, exa h of st hmm intersect uh, they have into 1 uh, by 2 in intersection and they are also closed so should we assume that uh, whatever the intersection is uh, the both function should have same value on intersection point yeah it should be otherwise there is the other is the function will not be defined right yes sir ha huh. that is the meaning of that whenever you have a intersection that's when both have this and this should have same value otherwise that h will not be defined right so that is the meaning of their domain that is we, if we take two domain this and this so their intersection is non empty that is the meaning of at that intersection point both function will have the same value that is the meaning of that only because there that comes from the well definedness of the function okay yes sir okay yes sir now that's mean whenever we have a, a function now if we always know that that if homotopic to g this type of collection of function which are homotopic to each other forms a equivalence class right because it, that relation actually is a equivalence relation so therefore now we define this class 
now this class means it is a class of functions or class of you can say paths such that whenever g belongs to this that imply f is homotopic to g okay now from now onwards we will work on this only okay so we will work on this only that's mean we will work on that class this one okay now we can define actually product path so now just forget about this now again now to define a product we need one actually important necessary condition first of all let f g to x b a b two parts such that say f of say f of 1 is equal to g of 0 say this condition holds that's mean where f the path stops from where g starts that's mean suppose this is your f and then this is your g so this is my g this is my f and this is that in point of g right so it is f0 so g0 so if 1 and if 1 is equal to g0 and that is g1 okay so that's when you can actually see that if a is a path and g is a path and if they have this point are same that's when we can define a new path from this to this so what we will do we will just we will just go to this to in twice speed and then go to this to this again in twice speed so that with the interval so here f travels 0 to 1 and g also travel 0 to 1 and here we take that speed twice that's mean when we travel 0 to half we will cover the distance by f which cover 0 to 1 and then from half to 1 again we go in the twice distance twice speed so that we can cover the distance traveled by g from 0 to 1 so that's all so therefore we define product of path so f generally we use that dot g s that is the simple notation again so f of 2s where 0 less than equal to s less than equal to 1 by 2 and g of 2s minus 1 Where half less than equal to s less than equal to one. Now you can see that it is continuous because both function f and g are continuous, right? And at the half point, point half, their value is same. That's when you can again use the twisting lemma as well in the dimension one. In dimension one, it is simple, right? You can talk about the point only. If the value of this are same, then you can talk about that it is continuous. So you have a path. So this is a composition of paths. Okay. or you can say the product paths now this is clear right this is very simple now in similar notation we can define now we have a class class of paths now we can define that f g now here to define this one we just write in uh, to each other okay so we will not write anything dot or anything you can if you want you can use dot as well but we are not using dot now we define now this that is product of two class of paths we define in this way that is equal to f dot g in this way now obviously now we have to check that why this is well defined why is why this definition is well defined okay so do you want a little is a quick break on of this or shall i continue
it is up to 11 right that's when we can continue so what is your opinion no opinion so well like we can continue since we are only reviewing the same like same things that ma'am has already told us okay good 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 fine now why that is well defined now why that is well defined that is a question right now again you have already known this one that why because this is well defined now suppose say f we can take a new page say f say 0 is homotopic to say f1 say via say ft okay you can write via f as well where f is your f st your ft is in this way okay and say g0 this g1 via say gt okay now this is f0 is homotopic to f1 g0 is homotopic to g1 then you can check that here also that ft dot gt this is well defined why because ft of one that is same as say f01 right because we know it is path homotopy via this ft so therefore both have common endpoint now that is g01 and that is actually gt sorry zero that is gt zero now this is well defined now since this is well defined so now you can say that f0 dot g0 is homotopic to f1 dot g1 via ft dot gt right you can say that so that's mean whenever f0 equal to f1 and g0 equal to g1 so that will imply f0 dot f1 equal to f0 g0 dot g1 so that imply f0 f1 equal to g0 g1 okay so therefore the definition of this product of path is well defined so therefore that definition f g equal to f dot g is well defined okay right now this part is simple now now we talk about loops so what is loop now let f 0 1 to x be a path such that f of 0 equal to f of 1 say some point x 0 okay so that's mean it is a path from say 0 1 to some topological space f in this way it is start from here and it ends from here so this is this kind of path that is x0 okay so now so let us denote Pi one x zero as a set of all homotopy class of paths in X with base point x0 so what is base point x0 so if we have this then we say that f is a loop
with base point x0 okay so we define this is a set which is a set of all homotopy classes of paths with base point f0 so that's mean if this is belongs to that pi 1 of x comma x0 so that implies it is if and only f is a path this one right a path that is a continuous function from 0 1 to x with the property that f of 0 equal to f of 1 equal to x0. Now is that clear of this set? And now for any two element f and g belongs to that pi 1 x comma x0 we can define that product. Why we can define the product as f of 1 equal to g of 0 and both are x0. In fact, we have something stronger condition, right? You can write it. In fact, we have f of 0 equal to f of 1 equal to g of 0 equal to g of 1 all are x0. Okay, is that part is clear? Sir, all the paths belongs to that pi 1 x x 0 are loose only. Right. So that's mean we have taken now. So that we are denote this as a set of all homotopy classes of paths. Okay, classes of loops we can say right. Good. Ah, it is better. Loops in x with base point x 0. Okay, so that's mean whenever we take an element of pi 1 x, <coughs> that's mean it is not a path actually, it is a class of paths such that, that not a, that's mean a class of loops you can say, it is a class of loops, that's mean f is a path, right, with the common in point, that is f0 and f1 both are same, so that's mean it is a loop actually. Okay. Okay. And we are taking that class of f. Not only are taking f. That's mean elements of this pi one x comma x zero. It is not a path. It is a class of paths. Okay. So uh, Monisha define this one. That pi one x x zero. This set. No, sir. Okay, good. Now, but that is clear, right? Now, yes, sir. Okay. Now, what is that main theorem? That is the most important theorem from where this algebraic topology code starts. Also, Munisha proved half of this theorem actually, but he did not mention that one. So it is say pi one x comma x0 forms a group you can say better it is with respect to the product this one that's been that product we define now it says that with respect to this product it forms a group now to check that something is group what you need to prove it is it has closure property associative property right it has that it has one identity element and it every element has inverse right you have to choose, you have to prove these four properties now the first property closure. Now if you take f and g from pi 1 x comma x 0. 
Now, can you share that? Their product also belongs to pi one x comma x zero. Can you share that? But how can you share that? If you if you say that, then how can you share that? Can you give the reason? Uh, I think we already discussed that uh, like f dot g equivalence class is a well defined operation, and uh, since again since f and g have their both endpoints as x zero, so uh, like uh, uh, so f dot g will also have both its endpoints as uh, right, x zero. Right, right. Yeah, and that is that is we have already defined, yeah. already proved actually, right? Because yeah. that is just f dot g, and since both are loops, so f dot g is well defined. Now again, f and g both have the same mean points, right? So therefore, f dot g is actually a loop, right? So therefore, their class is in this. So therefore, closure property is trivial. Trivial in the sense that we already proved that. Now comes to the next property, that associative. Excuse me, sir. Hmm. Sir, if uh, f and g both are loops, then how will their product will look like? So the upper, this is F. Say this is G. Or you can say suppose this is F. Say it can be this is my G. Now ultimately, when you draw this path, this path will be this way. We'll go this, this. Oh, I missed that one anyway. <laughs> it is like this. Two two lines will be created. Two loops in one. No, no, not two loops. It is a loop. We are not saying that. What is the definition of loop? That means f dot g. It is a so path. First of all, continuous function from zero one to x, right? And f dot g that zero equal to f dot g one. So that is the definition. So it is a loop. So it it's like f will start from x naught, and that hmm. x naught. Then G will start from X naught. Then it it also ends on X naught. Right. So it is uh, by मतलब trivial definition से it is showing that there are two loops. No no not two loops. It is a loop. Even when you define f, right? What is the condition was it is a loop. F is a loop. The condition was it is a just continuous function from this to this, and it is just condition that f of zero. And f of one, that is same. But does it mean that f will not be equal to x zero at any other point? Does it say that? It did not say, right? Yes. F can be in this way. It can be go like this, and again come here, again go, 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 again come here, and finally stop here. It can be this way as well. But okay, for sir. loop, we need only this condition. But that does not mean that f. Uh, in that interior of open interval zero one, f is not x zero. We are not saying that. It can be. It can be x zero at other some other points as well. We do not care about that. But for loop, we need both in points should be same. That's all. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, but I mean, do not confuse with the definition of loop here. So I am not saying that loop means a circle. It is not. Loop can be anything. Loop means we have a continuous function from uh, uh, closed interval zero one to x such that the first point and the end point both are same. That's all. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I am not saying that loop means a circle. So anyway, so in the graph theory, it has different loop, but anyway, I do not think that that those are only loops. Fine. So we can prove that associative property. Okay. So that's mean we will prove that. Say f, say g. So H belongs to pi one x comma x zero, and we prove that 
f g and then h is same as this. Okay. So in other words, we this is the same as we prove that f dot g then dot h that is homotopic to f dot g dot h. So we will prove this. Okay. Now how to prove this one? Now we first define what is f dot g dot h. Okay. So first. F dot G say dot H. Now if you look at this definition, this will be first of all F dot G, then 2S, right? And then H, 2S minus 1. It is 0 less than equal to S less than equal to half. And then half less than equal to S less than equal to 1, right? Now again by splitting we will get F 4 S so 0 less than equal to S less than equal to 1 by 4 G now 2 into 2 S minus 1 that is 4 S minus 1 say half less than equal sorry 1 by 4 less than equal to S less than equal to 1 by 2 and then H 2 S minus 1 half less than equal to S less than equal to 1 okay is the definition clear this now similarly we define this in this way f to s half and g dot s to s minus one Now again we have f of 2s g of 4s minus 2 and h of 4s minus 3. Okay, now is that clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, can you give me one continuous function h such that at 0 it will give this one, at 1 it will give this one? Can you construct that? Yes. Any idea how to construct that directly? Yeah. Sure. In the last class, we had first discussed another lemma, wherein we, wherein okay. we forget about that. Position. Forget about that. Directly just define one h zero one. You learned that one, right? So that is fine. No, but actually, here, we can use that similar construction and show it directly also. Uh, like uh, we'll have to show. We, we can create a composition map. Uh, right, so how to find that one? So, so that is a clear one. So how to prove, uh, find such a function? Now, first of all, now see that what are the my domain? So here we need this, right? Zero less than equal to S less than equal to one by four. And here we need this one. So zero less than equal to S less than equal to one by two. That's when we need a function actually that such that it gives at zero, it will give zero, right? Both both way. But here at the when t equal to zero, it will give one by four, and when t equal to one, it will give half. So first of all, you can choose this one in this way that zero less than equal to s less than equal to say.
So zero less than or equal to s. So less than or equal to what we can take? We can take one plus t by four. Okay. So we are just taking that uh, linear one, right? So linear operation only. So you can check that if you take t equal to zero, you have one by four. At t equal to one, you will have two by four. That is one by two, right? So that so at the point t equal to zero, we will get this. At the point t equal to one, we get this one, right? Now how to choose that inside function? Now there is a trick also. Now what you can do in this case from this you can check that so zero less than equal to four s by one plus t less than equal to one, right? Just multiplying this. So therefore you choose your function that f four s one plus t. That's why. Okay. Now we raise this. Now, how to find that one? Now again, we have to start from this one plus four by sorry, one plus t by four less than equal to s, right? Less than equal to. Again, now what you need? See, at t equal to zero, now you have one by four. T equal to one, you have one by two. Now at t equal to zero in the right side, t equal to zero, you need one by two, and at t equal to one, you need three by four. Now what you can find then here? What you can write here? See, you need this and this, one by two and three by two. So two t plus one by four. Two no no you will not take this is two plus t by four. Okay because we are just taking that linear one. Now again yeah. now how to find this now again if you do this one now again you can check that if you do this then if you have four s okay so one plus t less than equal to this less than equal to two plus t okay. Now, if you take zero less than equal to four s minus t minus one less than equal to one, so you can write your g this that four s minus t minus one. Okay. And similarly for this other one, we have to start from here two plus t by four less than equal to s less than equal to obviously we need one. Now again, if you do that same calculation, you will find here. Again, I can do it for you as well. So first of all, you can take that now. What can I do first? We can do two plus t less than equal to four s less than equal to four. Then we can do that minus so zero less than equal to that 4s minus 2 minus t less than equal to we are dip, we are minus right so minus 2 minus t then we can divide so 0 less than equal to 4s minus 2 minus t divided by it is 2 minus t so 2 minus t right so less than equal to 1 so we have this now you can put here it is so h is 4s divided by 2 minus t now minus 2 plus t by 2 minus t this so you have this one now you can check you have same function now if you put the values here you will get this value for if you put t equal to 0 then you get this value if you t equal to 1 you get this value so this is a simple trick to find this kind of function and also you can check the continuity as well if you put this value here you can find it is always one and if you find this value here you will always zero that way we are constructing that function so that composition is also well defined okay and also at t equal to zero you get this map at t equal to one we get this map and also we can use that similar approach for the continuity as well so we are done okay so in this way we can find that composition right now it is a 
homework for you homework in the sense that i am uh, so i have already uploaded the lecture note you will find that but do not look at that lecture note okay now calculate now try to find that if that x e0 now e x0 means that constant part so this is a constant part 0 1 to x such that e x0 x2 equal to only x0 so this is a constant part okay now prove that that is f and e x0 and e x0 dot f that is also homotopic to f okay now just find this one and similarly you can try to find that inverse as well okay fine now 